So up guys, CT Stealth here and today I'm going to show you how to uh, hook up the IK setup. Uh, in my last video we set up the FK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the FK and make sure my bind bones are gone and hide the controllers. Alright, so kind of make this a little smaller so you can see. And now what we're going to do is it's kind of tricky. This is different than FK because FK, the forward, forward kinematics, you start from each rotation you work down towards the foot for the legs case. But in an IK you actually move the foot and it's going to control everything else uh, above it. Now at first it's going to sound kind of easy because Maya actually gives us these types of ways to make it a little bit simpler. But first of all, make sure you're in your animation menu set and go over to skeleton and then you'll notice these two options here. There's the IK handle tool and the IK spline handle tool. Now the spline handle, the IK spline tool, handle tool is used for IK involving the spine. Whereas the IK uh, handle tool is, is what we'll be working with primarily for the leg. But I just wanted to make sure you know that there was two different types of those. Now you need to make sure, and you always have to do this, is that when you go to skeleton and you come, and you're going to select the IK handle tool, make sure you choose this option box because we have two different types of solvers here. We have an SC and an RP. Now I don't know what the SC actually stands for abbreviation wise, but I do know that the RP stands for rotate plane. And this is um, the only way to really tell the difference between the two is that the RP means rotate plane and it's used for uh, knees and elbows. So like I'll give an example. Uh, for the hip, we will be placing the IK between here and the ankle, and the rotate plane will allow this knee to turn uh, sideways, and we'll hook that up later on. It's really simple to do. Whereas the SC solver is meant for just a joint that wouldn't involve another joint in between it. So like with the rotate plane, we'd be choosing this joint and this joint over here, but the SC we'd only be choosing this one and this one. Okay, so remember that RP is typically used for knees and elbows and other things that bend and you want to have a rotated axis, whereas the SC solver is going to be for, well, well, we'll use it for our feet, which is uh, when we'll click here and click here to kind of just make, we want the IK, but we only want it between those two joints. So that's the difference between the two. I always choose this sticky because it uh, allows more of a stick to it. Um, I don't really know how to go into detail. It's just it seems to be a, a little bit easier for me. So I always check this sticky box. It allows me some other options later on. But that's something you don't really have to worry about right now. So uh, first I'll start with the knee. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select, uh, just hold down V and click the first joint. This will be the IK hip. I don't know if you can see that, but it's the IK hip, and then I'm going to hold, continue to hold V and select the ankle down here, and you'll notice in my outliner I have an effector and an IK handle. Now for the IK handle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it a um, hip handle, and the effector never touch and never move. Basically it forms the solver for the actual um, the leg. Uh, basically, you can kind of test this out, but when you move the effector, well, I mean, not the effector, the handle, when you move the handle, you'll notice that uh, you'll have a similar IK setup. Now, it has this rotating disc, it's located up here, and it tries to solve the distance between the two of them. Now, when we originally made our bones, it was very important, if you recall, that I said to make sure that your your uh, knees are bent a little bit because if this is not bent correctly what will happen is is that uh, it'll be perfectly straight and it'll never solve that distance between the two points here so it's kind of weird to envision but trust me you definitely don't want it perfectly straight so you need to make sure you have a little bit just a tiny bit of the bend so at least you know you can get this solve it correctly and that's the importance of that so um, as you can see as I select my handle I have these different types of 
attributes. This is what I'm talking about when I was saying about the rotating plane. The rotate plane can add the uh, the twist and the roll. So, you know, it's just kind of stuff like that. But um, now we're going to go back to the skeleton IK handle tool option box and go to the IK SC solver instead of the RP. And now we're going to zoom in, hold down V, select this uh, joint, that's the ankle, and then the ball. So now we have an IK handle there. Now I'm going to do that one more time. This time I don't have to add any attributes or change anything. So I'm just going to hold down V, select the ball, and select the toe. So now we get these uh, these handles here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and name them real fast because it's rather important that you name them. Uh, this is the ball handle, and this is the toe handle. All right, now, now that that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to do something pretty important. This is called the reverse foot handle tool. Uh, it's, I'm sorry, it's not a handle tool. It's just the reverse foot. Basically, what we have to do is we have to select the ankle, and we have to Control-D to duplicate it. And we select everything inside of it. So after I've duplicated, I can delete the effectors because they won't have IK added to it. Now I'm going to just hold down shift and click all three of them. Now I'm just going to press shift and P and it unparents everything. Now I'm going to select the toe and I'm going to duplicate the toe. Now I'm going to call this toe the heel. All right. Now I'm going to move the heel backward to about right here. Okay. This is the ball point of which your rotating axis will be. Um, when I rotate the entire foot, this is the exact point it's going to rotate. And I'm about out of time, so I'll continue this in the next video.